Hand it over to Anthony, Bernice, Daniel, and Gaeta. Hello, I'm Daniel. Okay. Good morning, or I guess right now it's not morning, but good afternoon. My name is Daniel, and I'm here with Timeverse uh, with my team here. And I want you to imagine a little bit of a few things that I'm going to mention. Imagine a world where someone has access to communication or no one has access to communication. Imagine a world where all people were equals. Okay, so there are two things. Now I want you to stop imagining things. I want to talk about uh, how 22 years ago, I did not have access as a deaf person. I was like you. I was born hearing. I was not born deaf. And I became deaf at the age of eight, you know, through meningitis. But before that, my class was full of sounds, voices, you know, happy noises. But after that, and my world changed. I became sad, isolated. No one was near me. I didn't have friends or family that were able to communicate with me. It was just myself. Okay. So I'm not the only deaf person in the world. There are 1.5 billion people who are deaf in the world. And in Africa alone, there are 40 million deaf people there. You know, you have communication with one another. But from my team, we are still um, dealing with three very large problems. First of which is the cost of interpreting. A lot of deaf individuals can't afford the hourly cost of $20 an hour for an interpreter or more. The second issue is leveraging technology exclusion. A lot of deaf individuals don't have technical skills to be able to be trained with. And then the final problem, there's not a lot of spaces where deaf people can feel included in social interactions with one another to be able to communicate with one another freely. Thank you, I'm gonna turn it over to my team. Thank you so much, Daniel, for giving those insights to us. And for most of us, if we did not have this interpreter among us to interpret to us what Daniel was saying, then we would be totally unaware of what it is that he was trying to communicate. And that is where we come in as Signvus. So Signvus, we are building an application tool called Tab360 that is able to interpret text and speech to sign language. Think of it like having an application whereby you can be able to type in exactly what it is that you want to be interpreted. And once you click interpret text, the application is then able to load an animation that basically plays the sign language interpretation of what it is that you have typed into the application. An example is the demo video that is playing right now. Good morning, many people are visiting Mombasa to watch the beautiful sunset, of which I would invite you all to visit Mombasa in Kenya, a very beautiful place and the application is then able to interpret. Um, sorry, there is also the speech interpretation. I happen to have spoken over it. Let me just play it back. I think the audio went on a break as we were doing this. So the application is also able to take speech inputs and once a person clicks the microphone icon on the application, they are able to speak into the application and it gives the sign language interpretation of what it is that they have interpreted. And so, what? Okay, cool. So how exactly does Tab360 work? And I'd like you to take this journey with me. So we are going to start from this end and I'll say, okay, Gaida, you can come join me. So we'll say that I am the text input and Gaida is the speech input. Yes. And so, Okay, you're the text, I'm the speech. Yeah. So what happens is if it is text input, she will directly go into glossification and she moves forward into that. And so if I am the, text, the, the speech input, I will have to go through Microsoft Azure AI speech first, whereby the speech is then 
converted into text. And once it has been converted into text, the text glosses are then moved into the glossification space. And what happens is basically, since we are now both text, we move together into the glossification section. And so once the text is glossified, glossification is basically the process whereby we take the normal written language syntax and it is then converted into the sign language syntax because the sentence structures in written language and sign language are different. And for us, we are dealing with specifically KSL and RSL. And so once it has been glossified into the specific context of which we are currently looking at the Kenyan sign language, the input again moves into the sign motion generator. So one thing that we are incorporating into our process of making this data and basically building it into the application is motion capture systems. And the data as we take it is we have individual signers wear this motion capture suit. So basically it is what we see in the Marvel Studios movies, like what Spider-Man wears for him to be able to do all the cool tricks that he does. That is the technology that we are incorporating and this enables a user to then wear the suit and does the specific motion for the specific translation. And once this glossified text has been moved into the motion generator, we then have the motion attached to the specific sign brought together and they now act like a unit. So we are having the motion and the, and the text, no, the motion and the glossified text now working together and this enables the user to then be able to load the application. So once the motion and the text have been attached and it has already been glossified, the user then has inputted, for example, an uh, interpretation for good afternoon. So these two are then glossified and rendered onto the 3D character, and that is also done in the motion generator. So the motions are rendered onto the 3D character, and once the user loads the application, then the animation of what it is that the user has inputted is then able to play. So for example, if you type in hello, it goes through that whole process, and once you've been able to load the application, it shows you the sign language interpretation of what it is that you needed. And so, sorry, this is to the next. Yeah. So this video is going to show you a visual representation of what it is I've been explaining, suit, the data collection process. Which is basically an assembly of several straps, sensors. Sometimes in May, sign was embarked Sometime in May, Signverse embarked on its first phase of data collection, collecting Kenya sign language data for all the words in its dictionary. This process would enable us to train an AI model to recognize and translate sign language into text and speech and vice versa. This wasn't really the start, but a continuation of creating some pioneering work in assistive technology for the deaf. This data collection process begins with getting dressed in the morning. So this video basically summarizes the process that we go through in order to give that data. It has As we say, we have the motion being captured. The data collection process, we determine what words it is that we want to collect the data on. After getting the motion data, we then train our model using that motion data, and then that enables us to be able to create the application as we have shared. And so this is a lengthy video, we won't be able to go through the whole of it, but we invite you to visit our YouTube page if you'd like to know the whole process and everything that goes into it. And this then comes up to this final application whereby you are able to type in what it is that you want interpreted and the avatar is able to do this for you. So this is an older version of our product. We will be doing a demonstration with the newer version that we have. And so, can getting dressed in the motion capture suit, which is basically an asset. So some may be asking, why do we decide to use motion capture? Why invest heavily? on expensive hardware and not just train the model using videos. Well, this will be our argument to that. So if you decide to use the videos to just train the model to be able to do the motions, you'll find that like shown in the previous video, the motion either becomes too robotic for it to be able to feel human or it has 
higher degrees of inaccuracy compared to motion capture. And so what motion capture helps us to achieve, number one, is not only give accurate interpretation when it comes to the sign language representation of the different text and speech, but it also enables us to do this faster with lower latency rates. And so this helps us to ensure that the accuracy levels of our platform are currently above 90%, which has greatly improved from the previous approach that we were using. So if you check. Next. Yep. So what exactly makes Signverse stand out? So this is not a new space. There are others who are trying to do the same in this space. But we are different in the approach that we are using, whereby we are not only using 3D avatars, but we are currently the only solution contextualized for African sign languages. And not only that, but even in our method of data collection, it is unique and in that the different players are not using the same methods that we are using to collect our data. It may take longer, but it ensures that we give our users accurate levels of interpretation, whereby in sign language, a different, a, a, a simple mishap in the way you gesture something can lead to great extents of misinformation. And that is what we are trying to avoid with the approach that we are taking. And we're not only giving our users a communication tool, but you're giving them a learning platform. Think of it as having a platform where you're not only able to communicate using sign language, but you're able to immerse yourself using a platform that you can be able to learn sign language as well. And for us, it is not just a business that we are trying to build, no. This is a movement that we are trying to bring on. We have been talking about inclusivity as a world, and it is high time that we actually actualized what we are talking about, away from the stories and down to the deeds, ensuring that what it is that we are trying to target actually becomes a reality. And as Signverse, we see ourselves as being at the forefront of ensuring that inclusivity is no longer a story, but now becomes a reality. And so, over the years, we have made several steps in our development and in our traction. But what, when it, last year, we were able to not only get our motion capture suit, but we were also able to build the largest sign language data set in Africa with 2,300 sign motions uh, currently collected. And this year, we are targeting to get to a target of 25,000 motions. That is in KSL, and soon we are also going to get into the Rwandan market, RSL as well. And so 2026 proves to be a year that whereby we're looking to not only have speech being incorporated, but how can we be able to achieve bi-directional communication? Currently, our platform does text and speech to sign language. Now, how can we be able to bring in the approach of sign language to text and speech? That is what we are looking at in, as part of our future plans. And we're not only going to limit ourselves to the Kenyan market, but we see an East African market whereby we are able to get data on KSL, RSL, and Sorry, so Kenyan Sign Language is Kenyan Sign Language. Okay, KSL is Kenyan Sign Language, and RSL is Rwandan Sign Language. And these are our target markets as of now. And with more data collection, we see ourselves being able to build more data and get more data of the African Sign Languages. So this is one of the applications of our platform currently being used. So last year, we partnered with the Kenya DG Schools program, whereby our our avatar was used in the interpretation, and this was a partnership between Ministry of Education, Huawei, and UNESCO. And basically, our platform was being used in 21 different schools, and six of them being special needs schools. And we see this platform not only being integrated in the education sector, but there are so many different spaces that you can be able to use Signbus. Communication is an essential need in whichever space you find yourself in. Not only education, but there's healthcare. There is events in an event like this, you need communication. And we see ourselves being key players in ensuring that inclusivity becomes a reality. This is also one of our key clients that we are about to engage in as well in having our products being used in communication in the Kenya, Kenya Airways airline space. And this is the team of students that participated in this year's Imagine Cup. And we are happy to have made it to the final stage and we are happy to have you listen to us as well. This is the advisory behind the young team. And we also work with different individuals. These are our signers. And Daniel is the one in charge of our data collection space and in charge of our community. Thank you so much. So join us today in making the world more accessible to the deaf community. Join our social media platforms at Signverse. Scan the QR code to be able to view our, our platform and our website. And together, let us make the deaf community more inclusive, one sign at a time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.